What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, WTH breakout number eight. Um, we're doing uh, it digitally again. I am uh, the co-captain, the first mate of this, um, the USS um, breakout or USS WTH. It's too many letters, but we actually have our main captain with us, Wilson, who yeah. is live via Skype. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You, you're on the... Uh, are you on the heavenly waters up by heavenly? It's it's very heavenly near where right. I'm at. Yes. Yeah, very heavenly. So I'm on location right now. On, on location? Yeah. Some, some people said where you're at, they filmed the new Top Gun. Did they? Supposedly, yeah. Oh, I think that gonna somebody be a... was you, because I haven't heard it yet. Oh, no, they, they were up there. They're looking for that little midget Tom Cruise. Oh. Uh, and, and they... I guess they like blocked off like a bunch of like um, roads and stuff because he, he's it's so secretive that he's there. Yeah, oh. uh, but you're 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 on location. You're you're not at the cave. I'm not at the cave either. No, we're we're scouting other caves. I guess you could say. Yeah, Different, yeah. Expanding you could. our caveness. Expanding our reach. There you go. In, in the territory. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you been, dude? How's it going? Oh, it's good. Good. Um, uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Just working and, and that stuff. Yeah. You, yeah. You look you look rested. You know, I got the day off today. It was a surprise day off, so that yeah. was nice. I went to work and found out I didn't have to work. Isn't that the worst yet the best? Yeah. Well, Probably. I mean, I was only about five minutes from work, so it wasn't a go. big deal. Yeah. Well, I think it's a, uh, it's like one of those days, weekends where you you wake up early to and you get dressed, and you're like, I don't even have to work today. What the crap? Yeah. But yeah. you got you go there, and they're yeah. like, No, we don't need you today. Go home. Yep. So, I mean that that kind of sucks at the same time, but it's kind of cool though. Yeah, I got to explore my surroundings. Yeah. Got to network a little bit. Met there you some go. people. Yeah, some yeah. people say that you uh. Might have ventured into a new location where they sell um, beverages for our world class segment. Oh, you mean the beers? Beers and cheers. And cheers. So yeah, it's, there's a delay. It's so hard. That's awful. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I went. I went to this place right here. It's called Sedelis. 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 Tell yeah. us about that place. Um, so our friend Scott recommended it to me and then where I'm staying at right now, I'm actually in a room of a, of a house. It's an Airbnb room. Uh-huh. Is that right? Something like that. But the actual owners of the house are also here right now. They, this is okay. like their vacation house or something, but they're here. And I asked them, I said, Hey, do you have a place you recommend for me to like grab a beer for the podcast? And the first place he said was this. And Scott also told me this place. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, I guess I better go there. Yeah. So, um, and according I, to the Google map that I looked at, it looks like it's pretty close to the, um, the lake, right? Yeah, it's like right across the street, basically. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Let's... he's opening that bad boy. Oh, we don't have the sound effect. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So this is what 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 did you say it was called the brew something? This one's called uh, the Bureaucracy IPA. It's yeah. their most popular brew. 
Um, this brew is big on flavor with tropical notes and a bitter finish. Yeah. So this is one of the ones that they always have on tap, he was telling me. I got to talk to a few of the people that work there. And they always have this one on tap. They have like a a white something on tap all the time. He said these two, the white one and this one are their most popular beers. It looks like they got a lot there too. They got what? Looks like they got a lot of food there too. Looking at their website right now. Yeah, they they apparently their beer cheese is very good. Oh, I love beer cheese. I know. And I I wanted to get some, but I did not. Yeah. So um yeah, so let's let's give this one a taste. He's drinking it out of a red solo cup, everybody. Like a man. That's all I got here. Yeah. Um so this like from the description, like it says like citrus notes. Yeah, I get some of that, but it, it's more. I can taste the citrus, but there's a lot of earthy to it too. There's a lot of hoppiness in this. Fresh and there's definitely a fresh yeah. grass, dirt and love. Grass, dirt and love. Yes, and uh, um, this one I can. There's definitely bitterness at the end there. Um, it's good though. I I like it. I'd buy it if I went back there for sure. Do they? Um... Obviously, they bottle it in the crawlers and everything. Do they um, can it and, t- and stuff too, and sell it in stores up there? Uh, I think he said they do distribute, but I don't know if it's at like stores. I think it's at like it looks restaurants like, and tap houses. Yeah, because it says finest on tap right here. It looks like it's different bars, yeah. barbecue joints. Uh, it looks like they're at uh, golf clubs and stuff. Yeah, um, burger places too. So that's cool. So what would you rate that? Um, I give this one I'd probably give it a I'd say 4.25. That's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not yeah. the best I've had, but it's it's definitely worth trying. If you like mm-hmm. IPAs, you're going to like it. But you said you've tried others. They're, they're like the you said there was a sour They have two sours, and then there's one that's a, I forget what it's called, but it's a something Saison or something like that, and that one was actually really good. I'd I'd buy that one for sure, but their sours are really good. I guess that's one thing they're known for, and I got to talking to one of the guys there, and uh, he's also been to Mraz, which is another brewery that we talked about quite a bit, and Mraz is known for their sours and uh we were we were talking about that but um yeah their their sours were very good i'd definitely buy one of those i i I was because i know like uh with the episode we did with scott we were talking about uh doing root beer and stuff and how expensive it was have you heard anything about him wanting to try to do in like a um like one of those um hard apple ciders oh i don't know he hasn't told me that is Wonder how hard that's gonna be. That, those are those are pretty tasty. But I know that like these guys, because I asked them like what I could get in the in the growler, and um, he would not. He said that they can't do like the sours and stuff like that in growlers because they take so long. They have a limited amount, and that's not something that they keep on tap all the time, like uh-huh. the IPA and. Um, filling up the growler, growlers, they have to like kind of overfill them, so mm-hmm. they're wasting a lot when they fill them up. So he was saying they like to keep those just on tap for people who come there. Gotcha. So, yeah. Cool. And so you'll you'll go there again for sure, or what? Oh yeah, and they were cool too because they they gave me a little map of all the breweries and Tahoe and stuff like that. And they said, yeah, this one's good. This one's good. So it gave me a lot of insight to the, the beer crowd up here. There you go. That's good. And then I assume you, uh, you, you spoke to them about us, right? I did. I said, I, that's what I told them. Um, when I was getting a beer, I said, Hey, I do a podcast. I do a beer tasting. What's one of your popular beers that I can review on it. And he told me either that white one or this IPA. 
So I said, okay, I like IPAs. We'll get this. Cool. Hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully I'll get and, a picture up there one day with you. Yeah. And I, I sent Scott a picture, but they do have a thin line brewing sticker up there on their wall. Oh, I saw that picture. You sent it to me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Kind of representing. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you grab a few, did they, did they have stickers for you? No, I didn't see any there. Oh, uh, okay. We'll just talk about them on the show. That, that'll that be mm-hmm. our memory of them. Tag them on Instagram or something. Yeah. So you and I have both been pretty busy. Um, and so our cheers segment, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple today. I'm going to cheers baseball season. Yeah. Opening day of spring training, I think, was yesterday, right? Yeah. And I think we lost yesterday, won today. Yep. Um. And I just, I, I love seeing that. Just it, it makes me happy again. I mean, esp- <laughs> tell you what's really making me happy right now is all of the uh, um, people heckling the Astros, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, they got booed in their first game, and somebody had a sign, and they made them leave. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't read it like what the sign said, but yeah, the Astros either. made them leave the game. Yeah, and then uh, I know that. Um, one of the radio DJs down here in Sacramento, Pat Walsh, he's a huge Dodgers fan, and he was at the Dodgers spring training. You mean friend of the show, Pat Walsh? Friend of the show, Pat Walsh. Yeah. Um, I think he w- um, I think the J- Dodgers are playing the Giants, actually. But I think they were, like, uh, just joking around, so they're sitting in the bleachers, and they were, like, hitting their, their metal bleachers, like, three times. They're all, you know, three times, it's an off-speed pitch, guys, come on. And so you hear everyone <laughs> goes, Boom, 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 like that. (laughs) Laughing, dude. It's. I mean, they're they're not gonna let that down, and they. I don't think they should let it down. I mean, it's it's getting pretty ridiculous. The more there's a lot of stuff coming out about how players are thinking that the Astro players should have gotten in trouble, not just the the managers and the higher ups in the organization. Mm -hmm. And I guess yeah, in a way, they're they're guilty of it too. They knew it was going on, so. Well, even what, what what sucks, though, too, is you have some of the players that were on the Astros that are no longer on the Astros that have gone to other teams, and it's tainted them on that team. So yeah. the camaraderie that you normally have amongst players are, are no longer – you're not as tight because yeah. they're like, you cheated, dude. You, you cheated. And then so when that pitcher or whoever is going out to play, you know, even the fans are booing him because they're like, dude, we don't want you. Kind of like I was saying about the whole Melky Cabrera thing. I'm like, dude, like, you cheated, like – you're scum. I don't like you. Yeah. And even though you're on my team. Um, I, I do think it's funny, though. I still think it's funny, though, how a lot of these other teams, though, my team included, are kind of, you know, holding their nose up like, hi, like, you know, yeah, they did something horrible. I'm like, guys, <laughs> they're not the yeah. only team that's done this. I almost exactly. guarantee it. They're the team that was caught. Yeah. And someone was about to get caught. It just so happened to have been the Astros. It could have been the Giants, Dodgers, whoever. But the more and more that comes out about it, like with Altuve and his shirt, you know, how he's running home and he's yelling at people, don't take off my shirt. I'm like, okay, if I won the biggest game of my life, I I don't care at that point. You're going full Sasquatch at that point? You know me, dude. Well, I've already streaked across, you know, AT&T apparently. Yeah. But. But he said, oh, I had a bad tattoo. Dude, I, I, I call BS on that, like, right away. But, you know, it, it's I think, I think it's going to be a good season. Um, I, I am a little worried about the Giants because we have a lot of um, new people on our team. Um, we lost yeah. a lot of good ones. We have new management, which kind of freaks me out a little bit. But ultimately, though, I mean, back in 2010, we had a new team as well. We had a, yeah. a team of misfits, whatever, whatever they called us, and we ended up winning the World Series. Yeah, it was weird. I, I uh, read an article today where the guy was ranking all the 30 teams, 1 to 30. Giants on his list were at 27. Ouch. But, yeah, but he said um, nobody thought they'd win it in 2010 either. And he also said, if they do end up making it to the playoffs, don't be surprised if they win the World Series. So, there's that. It's like that, what is that Madden curse for the Madden games? Anytime there's been a quarterback or something on the Madden game, 
that team is like either sucked or never won the Super Bowl that year. And this oh. year, it just so happens to be Mahomes, and he wins. So they say that he won the uh, the Madden. He beat the Madden curse. It's like beating that. Was that the goat curse for the Red Sox or something like that? Well, there was something with the Cubs too. Yeah, yeah, you're maybe, right. You're maybe right. the you're Cubs right. were the goat. I don't, I don't remember. Somebody had a goat curse. Yeah. I oh, can't. Red Sox. Red Sox were Babe Ruth, right? Didn't they trade Babe yes. Ruth? Yes. Yeah. And, and that I think that curse was strictly against the Yankees, though, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't really follow the East Coast teams. I don't follow East Coast care, anything. Um. So on that kind of the same note with uh, sports teams, because we have actually an intense top five for you today, but we're gonna bust out a few little fun little news stories for you, but um. I can't remember if we talked about this or not, but did you see that high-speed chase that went through the Kansas City Chiefs uh, victory parade? I did. It was before <laughs> it, wasn't it? Right before uh, it? I mean, either way, there's still a lot of people around. Yeah, and they pitted him like in front I, of all the people. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I would have loved him in there for that. <laughs> Someone videotaped it from like their uh, um, hotel room, and they're like, oh, look at that. Yeah. It, uh, that was as cool, but... Man, like, what a area to drive in. Like, I mean, also, I mean, with on that same note, with all the, you know, like, what happens over in, like, uh, was it France with the truck that drove Euro. through all the people? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. how do you get in there? Like, he, he had to think, have gone through some barricades. You think we would have had, like, good security set up for that because yeah, that shouldn't have been that easy to get in there because those things are targets. Yeah, there's a lot of people. So I'm I'm just like I saw that I, I got a little scared. I'm like, man, I could I could have gone really really bad. Like if that guy had no will to live and just didn't care, I'm not going to stop him. I mean, literally the car like got pitted right into like I think the sidewalk right in the grassy area right where people were standing. Yeah. So I mean I'm also also kind of surprised they got the okay to pit. Because usually yeah, you have to get the that's okay. Because um, th- you got to have like, if there's too many people around a certain speed, because if you pit at a high speed, it's not going to go as easy. So it's got to be a l- little bit of a lower speed. I mean, we've all saw that video of that one car on the freeway. I think it was a Mustang. They got pitted going really fast. And I think just spun completely around and kept going. I mean, yeah. it's kind of funny, but, <laughs> you know, it, it. that's why you got to go a certain speed. Speaking of like wrecks and stuff like that, I know you don't watch any NASCAR, but did did you see? Did you? Yeah. That was incredible. Did you see like the next day he walked out of the hospital? With his two kids holding the kids' hands? Yeah. Yeah. He shouldn't be walking away from that accident. Just He got T-boned when the other driver was doing like 200 miles an hour. And his car hit the wall. In the same fashion that Dale Earnhardt's car hit, yeah. which, which doesn't look that bad. And then he was kind of sliding across the track and the other car went right into him. And that then that just literally launched him like, dude, it seemed yeah, like he was probably 20, 20, 25 feet in the air. And he, he flipped was up the there. And they and what was funny is, is they said he has not he, at first they said he had non life threatening injuries, but he's in serious condition. I'm like. Well, what does that mean? Because yeah, I, I always thought that serious was like you could die. Yeah, then non life threatening. I'm like, well, okay, I'm a little confused. And the next day, he's literally walking out of the hospital, no wheelchair, yeah. Yeah. with the, holding his two kids' hands. I'm like, dude, like you had someone watching over you that day. Like yeah. that was crazy. Because I think it got the the the, the race got delayed. Yeah. Didn't it? Um, well, because- no. no, no. No, that was the end of the race. He crossed the finish line on his hood. No, no, no. I'm talking about the initial start because the day. Oh, I don't know. Because I, I was working that day and I I wasn't able to watch it. Because Trump did a flyby in Air Force One, um, which I heard was pretty cool to see. Because I mean, they flew it low. I mean, low for a yeah. plane like that. And um, then he gave I don't know what they call it, but the um, start your engines like when they announced that. So he was able oh. to. Do- and then he took uh, what they call the beast, which is the, his limo, 
and it was essentially the pace car. He got to drive, drove it all the way around the track. I'm like, dude, that, that right there is a dream. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then, that's cool. And, and then I think right when, um, the flag dropped, they it started raining. They had to postpone the race. And so they did it. Uh, the next day, I think that's what I heard. I don't, like you said, I don't really follow racing, but, um, yeah, because it I think it was on a Monday that it happened, and usually NASCAR's on Sunday. Yeah. I don't know. Which I kind of want to get back in. I kind of want to like start watching it because I mean I've been to like one race up in Roseville and TV that's, doesn't do any justice. Yeah. That's cool. But if you're gonna go to like a, a pavement race, you gotta go to like Sonoma or something yeah. like that. Big track. Yeah. If not, then you should go to to dirt. Because dirt's a lot more fun. Now, that's what your dad works with is the dirt racing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I've done, but I, I used to, when I was a kid, I went to Fast Fridays all the time with the motorcycles. Oh, up and, in Auburn? Yeah, I had a bunch of buddies that would race as well. And it was really cool. I mean, those bikes don't have any brakes. No. And they use their feet to stop. And um, we saw wrecks all the time. But Yeah, um, somebody died in Placerville on one of those. On on the um, round track motorcycles, yeah. Wow, they, See, did, yep. they did a race there, and his throttle got stuck wide open, and he went into the turn and couldn't turn. He went straight into the fence and ended up dying. Yeah, I mean it's it's dangerous all the way around. I mean I know, um, like a lot of those, even like in NASCARs, those cars are built for safety. I mean they have roll cages, they have all sorts of things. Their harnesses, even their neck braces. Now I mean they're if you were in a normal car. If you were in my car and you did that, I'd be dead. There's no yeah. question about it. So yeah, it's a testament to how far they've they've come, right? In and terms of safety, because he, like you said, he hit the wall the same way as Dale Earnhardt. Dale yeah. Earnhardt died. Yeah, and I saw that. And when I when I whenever I see those wrecks, I mean, like, of course, like w- we all like seeing a cool wreck. We're all like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But we all tend to forget there's a human in there, the yeah. person. Um, who's probably hurting really bad right now. And yeah. there's also someone's, that person's family who is scared yeah. to death. And it kind of puts it in a little bit of perspective for you. It's like, oh man, like, like even like in football, like when you see a guy on the ground and he's in pain and he's like, you know, not getting up. I mean, that's why I always love it. And I was telling my daughter this, like when you see, um, cause we were, we were at my nephew's soccer game and one of the kids got like the ball kicked right in his face super hilarious because you know i know how that feels <laughs> but everyone, <laughs> takes, everyone takes a knee and i said it's a sign of respect because that could have been anybody yeah and it's just a sign of respect and uh, i see i think his car his car slid across the finish line right and he ended up finishing like ninth or Fourth. 18th or something yeah it was four i thought it was, I, I I thought it was a little bit lower than that but um i mean hey he finished you know i mean that's still good but I'm glad he's okay because I, I, I hate hearing of people dying while working in the sport that they're that they love to do, especially in the first race of the season. Isn't NASCAR basically like Daytona 500 is the big one, right? So is yeah. that isn't it like the only sport that like starts out with its Super Bowl? Yeah, basically. And then, like, but what? then now now they have playoffs at the end, so it's it's more fun at the end now. Yeah, and then what's the end one? Is it Talladega? Yes, I think so. And those same racers, they come to Sonoma, right? But it's not a round track. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I think they have three separate road tracks that they do. Uh-huh. During the season. There's like Watkins Glen, Sonoma, and one other one. Watkins I'm, Glen is cool because I'm pretty sure that's the one where if you win, you get a grandfather clock. Really? Yeah, instead of a trophy or anything like that, you get a grandfather clock. I've been wanting to go to Long Beach and see that one where they actually use the the real streets. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, that one always looks pretty cool. Those are like yeah, different I've cars, ra- I've raced that one on Grid Racing on PS4. Oh, yeah? Dude, you're such a man. Look at you. I know. Yeah. I've, I've also fought in Vietnam and World War II, if you want to Oh, talk yeah. About yeah. 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 That's like... Brandon, he always says stuff like he was, oh man, you know, it was tough being down in uh, uh Columbia. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's all dude, I was playing some uh wildlands the other day. It was rough for us, man. <laughs> like, out alive. And then, then I go, Hey man, thanks for your service. Like that. He starts laughing. I'm all dude. Well, if you ever 
like start talking like that in front of people, dude. They're gonna punch you in well, the face. He's like, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just talking about video games. I'm like, still. Yeah. But um, let's see what else do I got here. Um, okay. I, the so, one thing I want to talk about that I think we should talk about before we go into our top five list. Okay. We're gonna do. I'm pretty sure you might be about to say it, but Aubrey Huff. I wasn't gonna say that because I wanted to. I wanted to. Um, you could go ahead. I. I oh, you th- had this, another thing. No, no, this could take up a, a lot of time. The Aubrey Huff yeah. thing. So we'll. Yeah, just that's why I wanted to get I'll into it, rest, just in case. We'll save the rest of my stuff for another time because that stuff has already happened. So let's talk about Aubrey Huff. Yeah. So the Giants um, decided oh. not to invite Aubrey Huff to their. 10-year reunion for winning the World Series because of um, a couple tweets that he made that they said were, I guess, misogynist and racist, something like that. And um, uh, one of them had to do with guns. And it was it was essentially strictly telling your kids how to uh, it was like gun safety. I'm going to teach him young yeah. gun safety. Um, in case Bernie gets elected in November or something like that. Yeah. Which I'm not against. <laughs> yeah. I mean, socialists, you... look, look what's happened in the, in the socialist countries. Do they have guns? No. no. They're not allowed to have guns anymore. Well, and even and what happened, they take over. And like I was telling you the other night, I would say it would be smart to freshen up, you know, stock up a little bit. Um, regardless what happens in November, because yeah, either way you yeah. look at it, you're going to have people that are going to be upset. So people are either going to come for your guns or it, like, you know, depending on who gets voted in or um, you're going to protect yourself, you know, yeah. either way. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just the way they went about it and said, like, oh, we don't agree with this, blah, blah, blah. And then Aubrey Huff comes out and says, you know, my my tweets or whatever he did, like, that's that's humor. Like, it was jokes, you know? He's like, I had the same exact humor while I was there playing baseball for him in the locker room. But now that I put it out on Twitter or social media or whatever, apparently they don't like it now. He's like, right. but it got, a, it got us through those hard times during that year. And helped us win a World Series. And they right. liked it then. Yeah. And um, he, we can't we, we can't let it slide under, under the rug either. Um, saying something. Am, am I sitting there saying what Huff said was okay about uh, whatever the girls it was and feeding them grapes? No. But like I said, we can say get, that's how they talk. They all talk yeah. like that, okay? It's it's locker room humor. Have you ever right. been in high school? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been in a back room in a grocery store? Everybody talks like that. But what's yeah. funny is, is, and I find it hilarious, that this comes from Giants management. Because Larry Bear, who was on video pushing his wife. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this guy's words didn't hurt anybody. Yet you physically assaulted somebody. Now, um, I not... had to take time off of work. Yeah. And um, we even have our new uh, coach, Kapler, who um, said that he has, um, what is it right here? Um, Kapler has been accused of mishandling assault allegations 2015 against Dodgers minor leaguer players. Um, he worked on the Giants president, Farhan Zaidi. So, so he. A lot of our people that are now on the Giants come from the Dodgers organization. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it, it does, for someone like Kapler and, and, and them to be like, he's not going to be invited to 2010. It makes me think there's a bigger reason than what they're saying why he's not allowed there. Because you can't sit here and say, um, oh, you said these things, so you're not allowed. But hey, we actually assaulted people, but we're fine. Yeah, and in reality, it's San Francisco, and Aubrey Huff is a Trump supporter. That's what it is. Yeah. But they're not coming out and saying that. Yeah. And I I know for a 
pretty good fact that there's a lot of people on that team who also are. Um, One of them may no longer be on the Giants and had to sign somewhere else because of taxes. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And which kind of tells you a little bit about what goes on inside that clubhouse. Um, One of the most liberal cities in America. Um, And and this goes back to our, um, our topic before the cancel culture. Um, Yeah. Dude, Huff was awesome. Like he was, he was, he was seventh in voting for MVP that year. And the funny thing is, is if people think this is new, that him talking like this, um, go back to their victory parade and having him do the rally thong. Yeah. The guy's always been crazy. He's always been like just this outgoing, crazy guy saying off the wall stuff. It's no different than, you know, than any other player saying, except his politics don't align with yours. That's what yeah. it is. And, you know, do, do I agree with 110% what he said about those things? No, but it also doesn't bother me. Cause, yeah. cause I, I see things. Uh, I hear things all the time. It, it's kind of like if, if, um, let's just hypothetically say, like, like you have a black friend and he tells you a white person joke. Dude, I'll find it funny. Be like, that's a funny joke. You gotta have thick skin and just understand, like, dude, this is jokes. Yeah, you but know, if you, meant... you tell a black person joke, it depends on the person, though. Like, it, like, it does, but well, if like, somebody like, else hears it, oh, right. But yeah. a lot of people also take on the offenses of, of, of other people. Like, yeah. you know, like, because I'm so woke that I'm going to be like, you, you know, there's that thing right now. I don't know where it's happening, but you literally pay some guy in the street. Um, I, I don't know how to say it without sounding like racist or not, but like, it's like a black guy on a street and you, you as a white person will pay him money and you kiss his shoe. What? I almost say it's like in New York. And then you start apologizing for everything. <laughs> Sorry. And so that was a sneeze, but it was like the quietest sneeze ever. I barely heard was it. Was it quiet? I tried it, to cover my mic. It actually was pretty quiet. Um, oh, okay. But I'm like, you know, people are just so woke. They're like, they're taking on the offenses of other people. I'm a big boy. If something if I don't like what something says, I just move on. I'm like, okay, I yeah. don't like what the person said. Um just because I'm offended doesn't mean I'm right. I, I don't then get the, 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 I'm, I'm not then able to tell that person you can't say that anymore. That's not allowed. Right. And, and, and yeah, that you, you can't talk like that. All right. Well, it's like, we could even bring that into Hollywood. You know, these people act like they're so woke about guns and stuff yet. Okay. We're going to be in the most violent movies ever. Yeah. Or, we could even, I mean, we really try not to dive too much into politics here, but we could, you know, dive into a little bit. Just like people saying, hey, you need to be more conscious, conscious of your fuel economy and this and stuff. But we're going to fly pri- our private jets all around because we're exempt to that because we know what we're doing. You don't. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're just the sheeple. We tell you what to do. I'm like, no, you work for us. Yeah, it's funny. I, I watched a movie. I think it was last night. Uh, have you seen the long shot? Man, why does that sound familiar? Who's in it? The one is Seth Rogen and Charlie Theron, whatever her name is. Oh, no, I have. Oh, I think my wife has. I think Steph has. Okay, so she's like a uh, secretary, something something like that, secretary of the state or something. She's a foreign. (laughs) No, she's not. Well, she is. Yeah. But in this, she's like. She's in in politics and they uh, the news outlet, she's going around trying to pass a new like climate centered and like climate change deal. And they're like, yeah, well, she's going around to all these countries and getting them involved on her private jet, you know, and talking about how you could do a lot better if you, uh, you know, didn't fly around on your private jet. Yeah. And yeah. But it, well, it and there was also another point in that movie where Seth Rogen he's he's a liberal, and he starts to go off on Republicans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then he finds out that his best friend in the movie has always been a Republican, and he like flips the script on him. Yeah, it's pretty it's it's pretty funny. But uh, when I was watching it, I was like, man, 
You know, that's how today's world is. Like, you you could be cool with somebody one second, and then they find out that you have a different political view, and boom, it flips. Right. They're like, oh, I can't be friends with you anymore. Yeah, it, it's some of my closest people, like I said before, that I'm friends with, like, have completely different views of me, not just politically, but religious stuff. You know, they're... Yeah. And you know what? I'm fine with that because it, it's cool to like hang out with people that don't agree with you all the time. I mean, it's nice to be able to bounce off ideas with, um, you know, like you, I could be like, I, I, there's times where you and I didn't align on and we, we're for the most part, like in sync with each other, but like, you don't, and that's why I kind of tell my kid, I go, man, you don't want to like be friends with people that are exactly like you. Cause then you're just going to be in a world of full of robots. Yeah. And exactly. that's not fun. I want someone to challenge me and be like, well, have you ever thought of this? And be like, oh, man, you know what? I haven't. That makes a lot of sense. It really does. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go back to, like, the whole Obamacare thing, I'm like, you know, that's kind of a good idea. You know, I really wish that could happen. But financially, it, it just can't. Where is it coming from? <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, it's a good idea, but rework it and find out where the money comes from. If you can find out a good way to make it come to where – it's not like me paying for everything or whatever. I could probably get behind that, you know, but yeah. I don't think that's right. I don't think you could do that. Just, I mean, college, you know, and I, one of my wife's uh, cousins, he's from France. I was talking to him. I said, Hey, so you guys have like, you know, free college and stuff over there. He goes, yeah. Well, how's that work out? He goes, well, it's hard to get a job. I go, how? And well, you have all this, all this college credit stuff. He goes, yeah. So does everybody else. Everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> And so he's all, so he's married now and he lives here. And now he has a good job here doing what, you know, he was doing over there. But it was, it was hard. It was really, really hard for him to do that. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's whack. It's not a good idea. But everybody who, and the thing is, is everybody who thinks this is a good idea are all young. They don't know anything else. They don't. They don't pay their own bills. They're still in mom, mommy and daddy's cell phone bill. Half of them still live in mommy and daddy's basement. You know, they, they don't understand what it's like to be in real life. Yeah. And, and that's what frustrates me because I'm like, you need to go to the real, real world. At one point in my life, I used to be like that. You know, I'm like, oh, man, like I, I forgot who I was talking to the other day. I said, um, I'm like, yeah, I'm all, when I was little and I live with little i was 18 you know my dad always said hey when you turn 18 you can live here for as long as you want but you're gonna pay rent all right cool my rent was 100 bucks a month yeah at, at that time i'm like oh man that's so much money i'm like dude i would kill to have that rent now <laughs> you know but but yeah. here's the thing what it taught me it taught me responsibility and it's just one of those things where you know we're gonna have to th- th- those people are going to learn sometime to become adults and get a job you know i saw somewhere the other day uh, it was a uh, it wasn't a meme it was more of this like a picture of was a mcdonald's hiring sign okay and the very bottom it says um i think mcdonald's like prides itself as being uh, america's number one starter job i'm like exactly that's all they are you're not meant to work there and live off of them it's meant to get you you're, you get you die, die, die. I can't even talk. Your stepping stone into the workplace. Yeah, and you go from there. Yeah, you're not meant to live off of fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, but that's that's why you get those jobs early and you gain experience. You, you're gonna confuse some people because it's it's not fifteen dollars an hour in other states. That's only California. What's in other states? <clears throat> Minimum wage. Oh yeah, that changes. Yeah, yeah, it changes yeah. drastically. People are going to be like, "What? Fifteen an hour?" That's... Yeah, they're like, "Man, I'd be rolling." Yeah, but you not, know, not if, in California. I, if I make what I make now here in California, if I was to move back to Oklahoma, um, where my mom's at, I'd be, I'd be living a good life. Yeah, I'd be doing good. But thing, it, it's all, it's all. I mean, it even varies sometimes between city to city because what I make now. I, I live, you know, pretty okay. I mean, I have a, an apartment, nothing, nothing crazy, but I can't do this in San Francisco. No, 
I mean, I, you can't even rent. A, I can't even barely even rent a hotel in San Francisco. It's yeah. just y- y- they charge so much money, and it, it 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 varies. It's so different from city to city. And but you're right though. It it's America's. I mean, but at the same time, it's all relative, right? So mm-hmm. fifteen dollars an hour here is seven dollars an hour there. You know, it's all the same. But now, if they were to come here, it would be they'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm making so much more money. But if we were going there, we're like, oh, I'm making so much less. But things don't cost as much, but things cost yeah. more. Um, it's just, um, you know, just like we have our our voting coming up for all of our propositions and stuff. You know, like, hey, uh, more taxes for schools, uh, more taxes to fix our roads. Nope. No, it uh, won't no. go there. No, because uh, what not happened California. the California. What the past 10 times we voted yes on this? Where did it go? Oh, to your pocket. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm done with that. I'm done. I'm over it. And and then that's that's just not just uh, like uh, Democrat either. Oh no, I no. remember that's everybody. That is like everybody. like Arnold. He ran as a Republican, yeah. and he got elected here. And he took money, or he tried to take money out of uh, like fish and game. Yeah, because he saw that it was we were only charging like five dollars for a pig tag in california and he's like oh we can make more money off this and i think it was five dollars for five or something pigs are a nuisance here so they want to get rid of them yeah and 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 uh uh-oh it's like breaking barriers dude uh-oh. <laughs> you froze, but no, you're good. No, I heard you. Say, last thing I heard you say was five dollars for five for five. That's why I heard you say you cut out for like. Yeah, it was it was like five. T- you could get five pig tags for like five bucks, and yeah. and he's like, oh, well, we should charge more for this. So he ended up making it like twenty five dollars for one tag, and he tried to pull money out of that for stuff for other things. And yeah. fish and game is like no. Nope, there's there's a law about that money that we make on the tags goes back to fishing game. That's it. You can't right. pull it for anything else. So yeah, it it happens. It happens all across party lines. Yeah, it, it's you. Re- and that's the thing that I tell people: like, concentrate when you vote on your local stuff. Um, it, it's you're gonna find out. Like, you have more power locally than you do um for like presidential stuff oh yeah uh, and just because there's an r or a d after their name um that shouldn't matter a whole lot i mean sometimes it does but just because there's an r on their name doesn't mean you could trust them you need to vet them and look at their track record and be like well no this no this guy when he was doing this he did this as well and i'm really against that i yeah. mean the, so a lot of these people Here's a good example. Let's, I mean, let's just talk about mini Mike Bloomberg real quick, who was a Republican. Yeah. He, he, he um, I think, uh, gave money to George Bush's campaign. I mean, yeah. he, he goes wherever he wants to. He flip-flops so much. Now he's a Democrat, and the only reason why he's in this race is to beat Bernie. Yeah. He, wants Ber- he, he doesn't want Bernie to win, which I'm fine with. But the dude's an idiot, and he has a lot of money. That's the only reason why he's in there. And so back then, just because he has an R on his name, heck, Mitt Romney has an R on his name. Yeah, I don't agree with a lot of stuff that he's done. You know, and I mean, there's there's things that George Bush did that I didn't like. There's things that Obama did that I was like, okay, that that's, sounds pretty good. I don't yeah. agree with everything, but unfortunately, I can't vote on you on this just because of this one thing. You know, yeah. and... That's why, you know, you, you got to look at you, everything. Don't just vote just because there's an R or Do a D. Do your research. Exactly. And I think a lot of or, people... Or, or don't vote off the headlines. Definitely. I would never vote off the headlines um, because yeah. right now the media is so biased one way anyway. And or let's just say it's like Fox News. They're biased one way. And you have CNN bias the other. Whoever you listen to, that's obviously who you're going to vote for. Yeah. I mean, Play both sides. Like what I do is I, I listen to both sides of the argument. I make my valid decision based off that. And I think that's the safest way to do it. Um, that way you're like, well, I mean, and I think that's kind of the problem with, with our country right now anyway, is we have both sides that just don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to listen. It's their way. 
both their ways are the right way and it's either that way or no way i'm like well you guys are never getting anything done it's like a marriage dude like if i was always right my wife was always wrong dude i'm gonna be divorced so fast <laughs> yep you know and I'm, I'm not gonna be happy at all so people just need to like just like you said do the research and and definitely um you know don't play to those headlines because that that's where i mean i know where i stand i know pretty much where you stand I mean, you may agree with us or not, and that is perfectly fine. Um, but what I want is if you vote for somebody and I really want to know, like, why? Well, I just want to make sure that you truly believe that person. You're and, making an informed decision. Right, because I see too many videos around on both sides yeah. where they say, why do you vote for Trump? And this person says, I don't know. Yeah. This person says, well, why, what has Bernie done? That's so good that why you want to vote for him? And they go, he's not Trump. I don't know. He's not Trump. That's not a good enough reason for me. I want facts. I want you to back it up with facts on both sides. I'm not just picking on the Bernie bros or whatever. I'm, 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 I'm picking on everybody here because you know, and sometimes it's hard to answer that question on the spot because you feel like it's a loaded question. Um, because someone's going to start arguing with you on that. But um, you know, when you have someone like Bernie who hasn't passed a law ever in his life, kind of makes you wonder, why is he gonna be a good president if he can't pass a law? There's no track record. So that's why I say yeah. that's why we're saying look at track records, man. Do your research, don't read the headlines and and go off that. There there are there are some uh, people up there that, that are running that I thought were decent people, like Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, dude, she she used to be in the army. I think she might still be. You know, she so she's actually served. She knows more about that than heck, probably Donald Trump. Yeah, because he's never served. And then even Pete Buttigieg, he did the same thing. He served, and I respect the crap out of him for that. Um, so I may see more eye to eye on them than other people. So just because there there's a D doesn't mean I automatically discount them. It probably means the majority of it I discount, but I just need to know that they're going to be. I want to make sure they're working for me and in california not the criminal yeah because uh, right now law-abiding citizens are uh getting the shaft really hard in california um we be, have become like like low low hanging fruit for um everything like like the criminals are just c- coming back and you know getting out that same day and yeah recidivism man they're 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 coming in getting out and going right back in again and yeah and that's california for you so that's why my main focus this year is like we got to take care of california it's becoming a crap hole which unfortunately i don't think my vote's going to really do anything but but you know what could take care of it what's that our top five cop movies all right so you put your fingers down right now, oh. sir. Um, so we're going to be doing our top five cop movies. Now, we talked about this and said, like, the, the movie. Um, I can't is, believe we haven't done this list yet. I, I know. We, and the funny thing is, is we just thought about it today. Yeah. Um, so the, the essential thing. Sorry, is, I had to plug my phone, headphone in. Oh, it's, all, it's all good. Um, so basically, it's. It can't be a movie where, like, you know, you're you, there's just cops in it because yeah. a lot of people have cops in it. The main character has to be a cop. Yeah, I or think I did a good job of that. I think I did too. We may have a lot of the same. If we end up doing, I'll just say that's on my list, and I'll just choose another one because I got quite a few. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna start off with this because End of Watch is my number one, probably my number one yeah. movie. It's a fantastic. Uh, yeah, so that would would be my number one, but I want to try and put movies on there that we haven't talked about yet. Right. So all the other movies I don't think we've talked about yet. Okay. Did you want to start? Or do you want me to go? Uh, you can go. Go with your your last one. Your your number five. Man, here's the thing: is these a lot of these behind me. I'm not, if if you're watching, behind me is my video collection. It actually yeah. goes onto the floor. And then in front of me is my horror movie. Is that movie a helicopter collection. up there? It is. I have three of them. Oh. Those were given to me from Brandon. 
he gave them to me. He's like, you want these? Well, uh, yeah. We um, should so, we should get the remote control battle helicopters. They have Star Wars ones where you want you one could be the the Death Star, and then oh. you, yeah, we got to get that. Yeah. So these are in no particular order for me. These are just my top five because these could all be number one. Um, I really don't want to say this one yet because I kind of want to save it for later. But uh, some of these are actually comedies, but they're still cop yeah, movies. I have I have comedies on here. So, but I'm going to go with, and this is was one that I, I've actually, you know, mentioned before as one of my favorite comedies. Um, actually, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. But it's The Other Guys with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. I actually have that on my honorable mentions. Yeah. That movie, I just watched it like three days ago. Was it your first time seeing it? No, no, no. I, oh. I, I've seen it before, but I rewatched it. It is so funny. Their chemistry with each other. And then there's a scene. I don't want to give it away if you haven't seen it. With The Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, and they're chasing these uh, perps, and they're on top of a building. Oh, uh, yep. And you're like, you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. And what happens? <laughs> you're like, aim for the, the bushes. Is, what the heck just <laughs> happened? And and everybody is just like, has this look on their face, like, what the heck just happened? Yeah. And it still cracks me up. And Mark Wahlberg, just like I said, just his um, uh, the way his his chemistry with Will Ferrell is hilarious. And the fact that what's her name, Eva Mendez, is Will Ferrell's wife. Yeah, that's uh, it, he, he that whole it, scene it, is so funny too. Big old broad. <laughs> you, you come dressing up in here like a hobo, and then you got <laughs> yeah. Michael, you got Michael Keaton as the captain who works part time at the Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Dude, yeah, come on, and then all of his lines have something to do with TLC. So he's yep. like, "Let's creep on out of here. Just don't go chasing waterfalls." Yeah, like, Captain, really? He's like, "No, no, I don't, I don't get. I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> I just, my wife and I watch that movie maybe like ten times a year. It is one of our favorites. I love it. Oh, and they're okay. cops. Yeah, they're cops. Uh, number six on my list is I. I could probably watch any of them, but six. the original You're top five, Bubba. Oh, sorry, I, I put six because I have into watch is my number one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, so okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So this is my number five. Gotcha. Um, but I could watch any of them. But the original is is probably the best, Police Academy, which just got released on Netflix. Yeah, I think they're all yeah. on there. Mahoney. Yep. I always wanted to be Mahoney. He's it, he's one of my favorite guys, and then he's also the Lavalantula guy. So, I mean, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Some funny things about that movie is uh, what's her name? Uh, is it Books or Cooks? The the, the little black lady. Mm-hmm. Apparently, like with, with her voice and stuff, she was doing a Michael Jackson impersonation the whole time. Really? Yeah, that's how she came up with that voice. Because I think she's in other movies where she talks the same way. Mm, let's, I, I think I read it on IMDb that she purposely did that because she was doing a Michael Jackson impersonation. Huh. Those are great, though. I mean, the other ones got a little weird. I think number three, Citizens on Patrol. Um, I like that one strictly because of the beginning. Um, in the there's a uh, parking garage scene and there's a bunch of skateboarders and one of the skateboarders i think was tony hawk yeah and so i always like that one but um i mean what's funny is is i saw that movie um in my youth but i think yeah. it was when it was on tv and then i watched it normal i'm like oh they it's cut a way lot better out. yeah they cut a lot out there's a lot i mean there's a lot more to see <laughs> and that, another one that kind of goes along the lines of that that like it's kind of an honorable mention for me, but not really because it was a TV show. Is the Reno Nine One One movie? You know, I've never seen that. You haven't? It's pretty funny. I've seen the Reno. It's basically Police Academy. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the, the Reno Nine One One uh, episodes, like the one where that guy shot that guy's dog. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, what's it? Lieutenant Dango? That guy's always funny though. With his, uh, what's what, what's it called? Uh, boot. What's he say? Boot scooting. What? Oh, uh, new boot scooting. New boot scooting. <laughs> yeah. he walks if, out if, with his boots if on. If you remember, if you remember the uh, lip sync challenge that went around all the law enforcement, mm -hmm. Reno Police Department in Texas. Watch theirs. There's a Reno, There's, Texas. Yes. Hmm. Watch theirs. It's pretty funny. Okay. They they do a lip sync to some some Reno nine one one stuff. 
I like it. Um, now this one was a little controversial because I, it, they're not cops, but they are. It's a movie called Let's Be Cops. That one was pretty funny, and I thought about putting it on my list, but I was like, but they're not really cops. I know. That's why I was thinking, like, should I just leave it off? Because that is a funny movie, though. It is. Um, so I was going to move that one to Honorable Mansion. But um, so that will be on Honorable Mansion for me. And so the next one I'm going to go with that. Uh, actually, this movie got me into, you know, how I like musical scores for movies. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite actors right now um, is actually, I don't think he's made a bad movie, um, but um, it's with Keanu Reeves, Speed. Oh. Actually, I have that. Yeah, that's on my honorable mention. Um, I, I think I might have listed that as one of my favorite action movies. But uh, this particular movie I like because uh, there's a lot of different elements to the police work that you see. You have him who's in the middle of the situation. You have the SWAT who's trying to find Dennis Hopper and they're in their situation. Then yeah. you have the other SWAT who's on that on the truck on the freeway trying to help them. So there's multiple aspects of it right there. And each aspect is just bonkers intense. Yeah. Uh, and it's a weird movie because you're like, oh, in somebody on a bus, you know? Like you right. don't think that'd be interesting just like the what was that ryan reynolds movie where he's buried alive oh buried buried yeah yeah you, you don't which, think which, that would be interesting which i kind of liked it was it, yeah because movies like that like buried they did they didn't set out to make anything new they didn't yeah. make want to walk away and be like oh my gosh that's an academy award winning movie um did that movie make you feel claustrophobic yes then it did its yeah. job it's yeah. supposed to make you feel uneasy, like you're buried alive and that you're truly feeling what these guys feel. And like in speed, like do that opening sequence with the elevator. Yeah. Dude, that's like my biggest fear. Like, like if I had to come out of the elevator, <laughs> like what's going to happen? I'm going to get chopped in half, dude. And that's what it, happens it, in every movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, the movies I watch, they do get chopped in half. Um, I, I kind of, I almost had that happen. It worked the other day. At the elevator, it, the door was closing, and I ran up and I like pushed my hand on the outside of the door and pushed it back open, and it was like the inner door was closed, but the outer door wasn't, so it showed mm -hmm. like the insides, and I was like, oh no, and I let go. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for working at the Hilton, dude. I know you don't trust those elevators, but Speed's definitely um, one of my movies. I I own it behind me on Blu-ray. Yeah, so the next one I have, my what's that, number four it would be. You probably have a little bit higher up on your list, I'm thinking. Probably. But um, it's, it's one of my favorite actors, and it's Training Day. Yeah, it's definitely up there for me. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Um, you don't have to say which one yet, but... Well, all uh, mine are basically they're mine are in no order. They're basically just they're they're all essentially my number ones. Like I I can't choose a training day like, is amazing. Yeah, not safe for the kids, but it's amazing. No. It is, and it it makes you wonder like, are there police departments that are actually like that? You know, I'm pretty sure there are, and I'm pretty sure they're where it's filmed. <laughs> yeah, down south yeah. in L.A. because LAPD has a they're pretty notorious for having some corruption in there, but uh, Denzel, his performance in that movie, especially at the end, um, yeah. like you sense like that that dude is like not right. And what's yeah. weird about the movie is there's times where you're like, well, maybe he's just you know just teaching him. Maybe he's actually literally cares about him. He's just literally training him to do what he's gonna do. And like if I was Ethan Hawke, would I would I do the same thing? Would I feel the same way? Yeah, probably. So at times your emotions get played with, um, yeah. is he is he is he a good cop or a bad cop? Then, then it becomes clear what he truly is. Yeah, and it, it's a that's a great movie too. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, uh, I think I rented it, and I'm like, I'm buying this because I know I'm going to watch it more than just this one time. 
Another one that's kind of along the same lines as that, but it's on my honorable mention, is From Paris with Love. Is that the John Travolta one, or is that a remake? Yeah, John Travolta. It might be a remake, but it, John Travolta is the one I'm talking about. I don't think I've seen that one. That one's good. You should watch it. Because I they, thought... It, it, I mean, technically, they're in another another country, but I'm pretty sure they're like FBI or something like that. CIA something. And, uh, yeah, it's a great movie. John, I, John Travolta, like I said, I think I've said this before, like, it sucks that his son died in right. that accident or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But after, after that happened, he came out with some of the best movies he's ever done. See, I got that mixed up with this one. The Taking of Pelham 123. That, that's a good movie, too. Um, but that one, he, they're not cops. He's just a dispatcher in the subway. Yeah, and I think John Travolta is the bad guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he did an, an amazing job in that movie, too. Um, which, um, I just got a cramp in my arm. Um, what was that movie... I think Denzel was in it and Chris Pine and it was the train that was running away. Train that was running. I can't remember what it's called. That was a good movie too. It wasn't cop based, but um there was an old movie a long time ago with um Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes called um I think Money Train is what it was called. And that was a pretty good movie. They were stealing they were use I think they were using the subway system to steal um money and they're putting it on the subway but i think i can't remember it's been a long time but there are i think jennifer lopez was in it too and they were using like some tracks or something like that that weren't normally in use i can't remember i could have the plot completely wrong but that was a good movie too um but you're right though travolta has put out some good stuff um unfortunately after his son passed away um he's a strange dude but yeah i just started watching the movie the other night i got 30 minutes into it and then fell asleep not because the movie was boring i was trying to fall asleep uh but it was a movie called the the fanatic and it's on yeah, amazon prime right now and it's filmed the director is fred durst from limp biscuit really yeah and it's got horrible reviews and what it is is uh john travolta is this fan of this actor and the actor is actually devin sawa now um devin sawa's character i don't remember his character's name but he kind of um, have you have you seen the movie The Fan with De Niro and Wesley Snipes? I think Where so. Wesley Snipes was a San Francisco Giants baseball player, and De Niro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot like that, but it's not baseball related. But uh, Travolta plays like this. Um, I want to say on the spectrum of autism kind of type guy. Uh, doesn't seem quite with it, but he does a good job of it, and he looks weird because he's like bald and he just looks fun like really funky in it but he um uh, i, I want to watch the whole thing I, I heard it get mixed reviews people people are oh it's horrible but they're basing it off of the director fred durst i'm like well yeah he's in a band that not a whole lot of people like but it might be a decent movie who knows yeah um my next movie um is actually pretty near and dear to my heart um it's a movie that I watch many, many times because every time I watch it, I I, I feel like I'm gonna figure it out. It's based off a true story, um, and it has a lot of good actors in it: Jake Gyllenhaal, um, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Mark Ruffalo, Ruffalo or Ruffalo, I can't remember. How, Ruffalo, but, I think. But it's Zodiac. That's a good one. Um, it, it's based on the Zodiac killer in San Francisco, and who they've never caught, and. It's based off of the the novel um, from uh, Mark R Ruffalo's character, uh, or no, 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 Jake Gyllenhaal's character in, in uh, Robert Graysmith. Uh, it's based off of his novel that he wrote because he worked. He was a cartoonist and he worked in the San Francisco Chronicle, and he's the one that kind of kept getting these uh, messages from the Zodiac killer, and they're trying to decipher the you know the ciphers that they kept sending out, and so they use like. Vallejo PD and then I think Napa PD and they all came together and they're trying to decipher these things um, and it it kind of um, they kind of got it narrowed down to one guy a guy that you think would be and that guy ended up like just dying and so a lot of people are saying it's 
it's had to have been that guy, but I, I think I heard recently that they might have been able to do some sort of a DNA type thing like they did with the Golden State Killer. There I was, thought that they said it might be the same person. As the Golden State Killer? Yeah. Well, I heard the same thing too. The only problem with that is the Golden State Killer, um, he didn't live down there in that same timeline. So during the time that he was in Vasalia, this is the Golden State Killer, when he was Vasalia PD, was back when all those things happened in Vasalia. Now, when everything started happening here in Citrus Heights Wait. and stuff, he was Auburn PD. So oh, he was closer to here. That's the guy that's on trial right now, then. Yeah, the guy that's probably yeah. never going to see a day in his life. And get, that dude looks like he's about ready to die. Yeah. And that was proven by um, uh, touch DNA um, through um, like a 23andMe type thing. And then it was uploaded into a family database. And they, and they found that the connection with the the samples, the bodily fluid samples from all the incidents in the past, that they, they found, um, I'm not sure if you can hear my daughter in the background. She's kind of yelling right now. What's going on? But um, they, they have like, uh, they uploaded all the information or the family did their stuff and then they already had the dna sample from him in the past and so what they ended up doing was they're like well we're just gonna hopefully somebody like upload stuff that matches this and then it did and that's when they finally went out and then they were able to get like some uh i think um the da or even sheriff jones i think said that they were able to get some touch dna off of his garbage and then they ran that against what they found at the samples in the at the at the scenes and they were a match so i mean it's him I mean, you don't, you can't, you can't duplicate that. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not duplicated. So, um, but the Zodiac though, like that's one of those things, like I hope it gets solved in my timeline, like in my lifetime. I just, it's, if you haven't read that book, the book even goes further in, t- in depth with, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s character. Cause he was actually one of the main editors at San Francisco Chronicle, but it's written by Robert Graysmith. And I think, um, the the main cop who's mark rafala i can't remember his name um in the movie but it's uh the real life guy who he portrayed i think just passed away so but that's a good movie you haven't seen it and it's pretty suspenseful too because those movies like they're scared the crap i mean because that's real that really happened yeah and uh and the reason why i like that one is uh rafala is a cop in that movie so i I consider that like a cop because that the cop movie because they're all working together. Like in almost every scene, there's a cop there and they're all yeah. it, it, that I consider that a cop movie. Yeah. Uh, my, would that be number three? Um, I'm going to go comedy on this one, but it's super troopers. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I totally spaced on that one. And what's really even funny is today at church, um, they even um, said, hey, what do you want your team name to be? And I yelled out, Team Ramrod. <laughs> and everybody just looked at me, they're like, what's that mean? Well, that's from a movie that none of you guys have ever seen. And I didn't even think about it to put it on my list. You know, I just I'm want like a leader of Cola, Cola please. <laughs> yeah. Such a good movie. Our buddy, uh, Brian, that we used to work with at Loomis, got to meet Farva and uh, um, the other guy, Dan. Dan, I think his name is. I can't remember. But the two main guys really? in, in Super Jersey, he got to meet him. Because they're both comedians. Um, yeah, and I don't know why uh, the second one got such bad reviews. I haven't seen it. It's hilarious. Oh, is it good? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's basically making fun of Canadian, like, Mounties and stuff like that. Hilarious. It's, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, I gotta see it. I gotta watch the first one again. It's been such a long time. Um. I can't even remember what number I'm on right now. Um, You're on two, I think. So I'm going to go with um, a movie that I saw as a young man. Just uh, my, sorry, I'm going to take my left ear off. My left ear and my headphone is like buzzing. It's annoying me. Um, a, a movie that I grew up watching. I mean, it, looking back now, I shouldn't have watched this movie. Mom. <laughs> um, but it's it's a movie that I, I believe still holds up today. They tried remaking it, and it wasn't as good, but RoboCop, dude. You know, I thought about that one, but then I was like, ah, uh, future, is that really a cop movie? But, yeah, I would have gone with that one, too. Yeah. It's a good movie. You, man. It's along the, the, the same lines as, like, Judge Dredd. 
<laughs> yeah. I am the law. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a. Uh... Was Judge Dredd a cop, though, or was he a judge? Well, I think he was both. Yeah. Yeah. And executioner. Yep. Um, Robocop's good, though. I always remember the scene with the guy that fell in the acid. And he's like, uh, walking across the road. And then that car hits him. And he just explodes. And then they have the camera <laughs> on the inside of the car. And it's just like a wall of like pink, reddish fluid going over the... <laughs> I'm sitting there watching this. I'm like, I love this. I love every minute of this. And then every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll you know, bust out that I'll buy that for a dollar line. But yeah. uh, it's just a good movie. I mean, because it, 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 it also... I mean, it, it touches a little bit on like, man, it'd be so cool if like, you know, I don't want to say cool, but like, man, like if we had our officers that got killed, sadly, real life officers in the line of duty, but they were able to still revive them somehow mechanically. Um, but I think if we did that, we wouldn't want to be cops because they would almost spend time with their family. But yeah. it, it's kind of a, it's a cool concept, though, th- that whole movie. Um, I've always liked it. Which I don't own. I don't think it's been released on Blu-ray. I think that's why I don't have it. It might have. I know the new one is, but yeah, that one isn't that good of a movie. If if you're going back in the day, I got a good honorable mention for back in the day. What do you got? Turner and Hooch. Oh my gosh. Tom Hanks? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I haven't love- seen that in a long time. <laughs> I can't even tell you what that's about. I just remember the... I remember the... Uh, the cover yeah and the, the the mastiff on on the cover yeah i, don't, I like dogs so it, it, it's a it's a cop and dog movie so yeah i'm good with it that's yeah I, I, I've I, been... would, I would almost even put like max on on, <laughs> max? on the list here yeah you haven't seen that one i got I kids young kids so yeah that's that's beyond me yeah um I'm gonna stick with the uh, the '80s here. Oh wait, and... I got to do my number two. All right, go for it. Uh, another comedy. I don't know if you have it on the list, but you should. It's with one of my my favorite actors, and it's Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> yeah, I left that off because I knew you were gonna hit it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both those movies are good. Yeah. And those are both movies that I quote all the time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. My wife and I were watching a movie last night, and it was it, it was a serious uh, courtroom drama that we've been watching on Hulu. And they're trying to find the drug dealer, and then I'm like, and then all of a sudden I turn into Ice Cube, and I go, "Find the dealer, fi- or find the supplier, you find the dealer." And then I'm like, <laughs> "Why I Work hard, yes. Play hard, yes." <laughs> <laughs> And then um, the second one is it ironic that he's in a cube of ice. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and it's funny is I watched that so many times, and there's a lot of scenes that I skip by because I, I I don't catch it the first time. And um, what wh- what was it like? Uh, I think it's the first movie with Rob Rob Riggle, and they're in the hallway, and uh, Jonah Hill and um, Channing Tatum are, are tripping on that Wi-Fi stuff. And they look at Rob Riggle, and he's he looks at Channing Tatum, who's obviously not a high school student. And he, I forget what he says to him, like, like, man, look at you, you're big, you're huge. What what are you? Yeah, like that. <laughs> and so we have some of our our our, our kids. I have middle schoolers at, at at Sundays at church that are the same size as me. And I, for some reason, every time I'm talking to them, I always think of that scene because I'm like. Dude, what are you like an adult? Like, like, are you like an under- <laughs> like, like, dude, you're huge? Like, what are your parents feeding you? Um, man, yeah, I purposely left those off because I knew you were gonna go for it. Are you one strapping or two strapping? Oh, that was that's funny too. <laughs> like, you, you don't two strap now, you one strap now. They're talking about backpacks. If you haven't seen that movie yet, it, it's it's just a good movie. It's because I think the original 21 Jump Street TV show was more serious, yeah. Uh, this was clearly made a comedy, and I'm glad they made it a comedy. Um, and they made two of them, and and they're just a lot funnier than I thought they would be. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do an honorable mention real quick. Um, a movie that got horrible, horrible reviews, but I don't 
look at reviews. I just look for at a movie, and if I like it, hey, I like it. Um, have you seen Chips? I that's in my honorable mention. With and Dax- it got bad reviews. Yeah, horrible reviews. I was laughing so hard during that movie. Yeah, it's funny. It, it's it's classic, and um, you know, it that's a uh, um, Dax Shepard and um. Uh, what's his face? The Michael little Pena, right? Michael Pena, yeah. yeah. Who's in your number one? And yeah. he, it, it's just, uh, it's a good movie. It's uh, has a lot of cameos from a lot of Dax's friends in it. Um, uh, Dax has like a lot of um, friends that aren't actors or they're like smaller actors, and he puts them in every movie he's in. And then so he like wanted to make this movie where he played a motorcycle cop, and and so they came up with chips. So it was CHP, and it's down in L.A., which I thought was funny because they said CHP Academy, but it was in L.A. I'm like, that's in Sacramento. Yeah, that's not right. I saw that. I was like, oh, I guess they couldn't get the licensing fee to like show the entrance. <laughs> but the movie got horrible reviews. I, I thought it was so funny. And that's why I don't really fall, go off reviews a lot. Um, like the movie The Fanatic I was telling you about, I don't ever, like, some people may hate it. I may like it. Like, I like most M. Night Shyamalan movies. They got horrible reviews. So, I just watched one today. Forget what. Oh, Glass. What'd you think? It was a good movie. Did you watch um, Split? I have not. Not yet. So, you saw Unbreakable and Glass, but yes. missed the, sequ- the second movie? Yep. Yep, I did. Were you confused? No, not really. Okay. Split is good. It's it's a um it, it it's weird because it it's literally multiple personalities. So it's yeah. it's it's out 20, there. I think twenty four. And then personalities. Wait till you beat twenty five. <laughs> Beast. Um so you got your number one right now? I'm on Yes, number one. Okay. Well, your, what was your, your number one? one? Well, like I said, I, I lost track of where I was going with it, but I have. I'll, I'll do another honorable mention. Oh, you did an honorable mention instead of number one, so Be, because we both said that end of watch is just like classic for us. Is mm-hmm. that your number one? Are you keeping it on there, or did you just get it out of the way? I just got it out of the way. Okay, so I got another one because I agree with you on that one. So I'm just doing an honorable mention because it's one of my favorite comedies. But it's also my favorite cop movie. And it's um, one in three, not two, but one in three, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. That's that's a good movie. I, I just, Eddie Murphy in those movies, I, I I could watch Eddie Murphy in a comedy any day. That guy is brilliant with yeah. his uh, lines. And, and especially like his stuff that's like um, coming to America. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like the, like that movie, though, unfortunately for him, uh, Arsenio Hall steals that show. But um, it, it's just, I, I love the um, story behind um, Barry the Hills Cop. Um, it, and plus, part three, they filmed it at Great America. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, those ones have a, are near and dear to my heart. And so. Was that, was that an honorable mention or your number that's one? That's an honorable mention. I have a number one oh, still. Yeah. So you go with your number one if you want. <laughs> My number one is a serious movie, and it has some really good actors in it that I don't really like outside of acting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, the Departed. Okay. Oof. I almost put that. Unlike you, I didn't put that because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That is a good it's, movie, though. It is. It's really good, and it's got so many actors in it like it i i mean it's 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 one of the best movies i've ever seen made did i ever tell you the story behind that <laughs> that movie um no. we back when my wife and i got married we were part of this young adults uh young marrieds group or whatever through church and they're all hey we're gonna go see a movie and i'm like all right cool they're all, yeah it's this new martin scorsese movie and i'm like Oh, okay, that's that's fine. And then we went and saw The Departed. Well, it's... I, I don't think these people have ever seen a Scorsese movie. 
um, or read the synopsis of what it's about, I'm like, dude, you have like literally every actor known to mankind in it. And it's taking place, I believe, like in Boston and New York. Yeah, dude, somewhere around it there. It is brutal. Like, I, how many headshots were in that movie? Like 30? And yeah. then there's a very unexpected headshot that you don't see coming. You're like, <gasps> did that yeah. just happen? And, and then after the end of the movie, uh, the leaders of the youth group or the the small group were like, we are so sorry. We we weren't expecting <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. That is a good movie, though. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it since that time, though. Um, I do got to go back and rewatch it. I own it, but yeah, I you do. watch it. So I thought you were going to say my number one. Uh-oh. It's a slash cop movie slash horror. That has I have on my honorable mention. That has two really good actors in it. One of them's an idiot. The other one I like a lot, but they're both good actors. Um, I'm gonna give you a hint. Are you ready? Yeah. What's in the box? I only know that from the Rob anybody in Don Joe. Well, that's hilarious. <laughs> wow. Fail <laughs> my part. We gotta. Insert the little sound clip here. Uh, seven. Seven. I don't know if I've ever seen it. Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. I don't think so. Oh, dude, you gotta see it. So, quick synopsis. There's these two detectives, Brad Pitt and um, Morgan Freeman, and they're trying to find this killer who kills people using the seven deadly sins. So. I can't like lust, wrath, sloth. There's like those different like uh, seven deadly sins. So he'll kill someone and then he'll like leave clues at the house or wherever. And it'll like, so like there's like this big fat guy, right? He's dead. And that's yeah. like, um, what's the word? Gluttony or whatever. And so, and then you find out who the killer is, but it, and the killer is actually Kevin Spacey. Kind of ironic. Cool. Um, yeah, because he's a scumbag too in real life, but um, it's a good movie. And the only time it's horror is like when when they're um, investigating stuff. It's like the music. There's no real um, like um, spiritual demonic element to it, but there's it, it's definitely a um, uh, it's a trippy movie. But they're they're cops and they're investigating. So I, I put it on the line a lot, same lines as like Zodiac, where they're yeah. Um, investigating a crime and then you're kind of figuring out like along as you go like the different clues you know i, I love those whodunit style movies i actually kind of like the murder on the orient express the new one that was a uh, good one i i liked it i liked the way it was filmed um and uh, i haven't seen the original but i think i read the book though um but there's this new movie coming out um it's already on theaters but it's called knives out and i heard i want to watch that I heard it's a lot like Clue, but it's yeah. like modern day. Yeah. And I guess they actually are remaking Clue, which I'm, uh, yeah, it better be good. But um, uh, Knives Out it's has one like, of my wife's favorite games. It's my it's mine too. But the thing is, you need more than two people to play it. And I'm really, yeah. I'm really in, in a point to where I have a third person that wants to play. But Knives Out, I guess, apparently, according to everybody else, like, Daniel Craig is amazing in that movie. He puts on, like, really? some, like, like country accent. So he's like, all right, who did this? I guess he sounds like more like Brad Pitt and Inglorious Bastards, right? Like, uh, I'm going to kill Nazis. Like yeah. that. And, I, I, and, and that cast is great, you know. So I, I, I like those whodunit d- detective, uh, you know, you find out little bit by little bit and little clues here. Like, like if you want to take the movie Saw, where you watch the whole thing at the very end, they basically play it backwards and it all comes together. You're like, yeah. oh my gosh, why didn't I see that? You know, then you could go into um, movies like, um, um, oh my gosh, why am I spacing on the name of that movie? Um, Guy Pierce. Um, gosh dang it. Yeah. What's the, the Memento? Have you seen Memento? I think I, think I have. He leaves something. Is that right? He writes stuff on his body, all right? Tattoos it on his body. That's what it is. The movie's actually played backwards. It's weird. Um, but it's a great movie. And I don't think that's a cop movie. I think there's cops in it. But I love that stuff, man. 
Yeah, I got I got some honorable mentions that some of them I can't believe you haven't mentioned yet. Um, lethal Weapon. You know, I only saw... Is it the first one? Is it the first one, the one where he's on the toilet? Or is it the second that's, one? Danny Glover's on the toilet and the toilet's going to explode? A weird reference. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Leave the weapon. Uh, leave the weapon and then also die hard along the same lines. Dude, really? Oh, how do you? Yeah. <laughs> um, what else do I? Have? Oh, this is one that I love. And it's it's some uh, European actors that I really like. Uh, Hot Fuzz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Simon, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, all those fellas. Yep. Yep. And then another one, which has our boy Keanu in it. Come on. You got to know this one. Street Kings? And, no. It's older. Patrick oh, Swayze. Oh, point Break. Yes. Oh, how did I forget yeah. that one? Um, oh, I know. I'm so mad. Dude, that would have been like. The like, scene oh. where, where he like turns to the sky and just starts unloading the whole magazine into the air. Yeah. I love that chase scene. I think it's after the bank robbery because it's like your perspective running down those those hallways, those little aisles, and then you have um, that that whole movie is amazing. The remake sucked. Yeah. Um, um, so. And then also one more that you've seen the third one recently that you didn't mention, Bad Boys. I was going to talk about that. Oh, uh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. I love all three bad boys. Um, I haven't seen the third one yet still. Dude, it gives me the chills. And, and dude, it brought some tears in my eyes too. And you'll, like I said before, and this isn't giving anything away, bagpipes. You know firsthand uh, oh. how ba- what bagpipes do to me. Yeah. It's not giving anything away just to give you a heads up. Um, so, you know, I have a few more honorable mentions here. So... One of them was Bad Boys. You stole that from me. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, but there's a movie that came out, I want to say, in the 80s. I'm going back to the 80s again with Tom Hanks and uh, Dan Aykroyd called Dragnet. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. remake of like the old TV show. But it's a comedy. And uh, it's just so funny. Like, Dude, I, I, I really miss Dan Aykroyd. I miss Dan Aykroyd in those characters. Um, those serious, uh, you know, um, what was he? Was he Vankman or was he Stans in uh, Ghostbusters? I think I he's Stans, but but he just his seriousness, um, that he has in that movie where he's like he's the by the book cop and Tom Hanks is like the the funny one that likes to party and everything. I, I love that movie. It, it, it's yeah. great. Um, then you got we're going comedies again. Naked Gun. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, that's around the same time as Naked Gun. Yeah, um, I actually watched that recently too. And every time I see uh, OJ, I'm like, dude, <laughs> that's so funny. If um, I did it, this is how I would do it. Exactly. But those movies are are, are the same type of movies that like I'll watch um, once and then a year later, and I'll catch something again that I didn't see, like Airplane, all those style movies, like those. I forget what like you like Inception. It. Dude, Inception, yeah. Like I'll catch something. I'm like, oh, I I get it now. I I, I yeah. or under I I see that now. I get it. Um and then then I, I think like you know, we've already talked about the police academies. I had that on one of my honorable mentions. But then uh, we go to one of my favorite actors who I wish um, was in more stuff um, now because I just think he's a good actor. But um, I think he was in No Country for Old Men. Maybe he wasn't. But um, The Fugitive, Tommy Lee Jones oh. and Harrison Ford. And seeing Tommy Lee Jones in that character of the DEA, DEA agent. Um, is he DEA or is he FBI? I think he'd be more like I FBI can. because um, he's, you know, chasing a fugitive he's not doing anything with drugs but i just i 
I love that movie. Harrison Ford's kind of uh, I think he's losing his mind as of late, but yeah, it's a uh, it's one of those. Uh, it, the Fugitive was the first movie I saw where literally the trailer for the movie gave away a huge scene in that movie, and I was so mad that they did because I'm like, why'd you show that? Because that I would have not even expected that to happen, but you gave it away. And it's a yeah. scene he's in that tunnel and he jumps out into the river. I'm like, why would you show that in the trailer? Why, why, why would you just leave that so I could watch it in real time? But, um, and I, I never had the opportunity to watch the original, but um, I always liked that movie. So, and it's like I said, especially Tommy Lee Jones as a cop. And Tommy Lee Jones was in another movie that I think was a sequel to that movie. Um, really? That I, I didn't know. Uh, U.S. Marshals. Yeah, U.S. Marshals. That's a sequel. It is, I believe, a sequel. It's either a sequel or a prequel to that because he plays the same character. Oh, I never. I, 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 want, I want to say it's a sequel because I think they reference the incident um, in that movie. But I think Robert Downey Jr. is in that too, so it's a good movie. You could you could also go in and say like, Hateful Eight is a cop movie. You know, it's funny. I own that and haven't even seen it. Really? That's Tarantino, right? Yeah, that's yeah, a great movie. It. You need to watch that one. I, mean, I still haven't seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I haven't either. So, but that's that's our top five. We got to yeah, bust out of these top fives, that. dude. I know it was fun coming back to our roots. Yeah, I I, I always like the top fives. I'm I'm gonna be like sad when we run out of top five topics. Yeah. So Top five wallpapers. <laughs> Top five carpet fabrics. It's going to get really boring. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I got. Um, you have anything else you want to add? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, I'm hoping this edit sounds good. Um, normally, uh, Wilson is um, at the helm, and he has a special little... At the captain's desk, he has this, these cool little, you know, toggles and levers that he does to make it sound better. So I'm hoping I could uh, make him proud, make Daddy proud. But yeah, um, you better. Yeah. Oh, also, I just want to say, um, everybody, um, I, I haven't gotten a whole lot of feedback yet, but um, if you have, just thanks for listening to the last episode that I put out. That was uh, a little difficult for me to do, but. Uh, and I remember talking to Wilson and I, I said like, dude, I, I'm debating on submitting it. Like it was like, cause once it's out there, it's out there. And once I hit submit, I'm like, it's out, it's done. And it was a huge relief. I've gotten a few, uh, you know, comments that, you know, said that they, they liked it, you know, just, just, it helped them understand a few things, which meant a lot to me, but, uh, yeah. And just so everybody knows field of dreams was playing in the background. That's why I was crying. Yeah. yeah, that's why. Well, my favorite part of the episode was when I literally started breaking down and I just stopped. And then I, I literally took like a 10 minute break, gather myself. Then I come back and go, that was clearly an edit because my voice is completely different. Yeah. <laughs> like, my might as well just say I had an edit there. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but but in, in all seriousness, it, it, it was a good episode. And I know that we've gotten at least download feedback on it. We've, we've gotten quite a few downloads on that episode. That's and, good. Uh, yeah, it's it's good because it, it puts stuff out there. Because it's stuff that people deal with every day. You know, it's, well, not, and, it's not just one person. And, and it, it's stuff that's going to be coming your way. You know, like yeah. with, with your what you want to do, you know, with helping people and fishing and stuff. Like processing emotions, uh, stress all that stuff. It, it, these are the types of things that people are going to come to you with. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to have the answer, but you just need to be able to listen and maybe just give a little bit of feedback and, um, point them in the right direction and stuff. And, you know, luckily for me, I have, I'm surrounded by a lot of supportive people, you being one of them. And it's, it's, uh, (laughs) you know, this, the podcast outlet that I, that I have was, it felt good because I've been wanting to tell people for a while. And, you know, it, it, that was like all of that was off of memory that I didn't have anything written down. That's why I kind of, you know, Tarantino did a bit, went back and forth, but because I'll remember something like I've, I've remembered a few things 
when I was editing it, I remembered a few things. Like, oh, I probably could have added that. But I'm like, you know what? I don't need to add everything. I could leave yeah. it out. And it that'll get talked about later uh, with someone in private or whatever. Or I'll remember when I tell the story again. If someone asks, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I yeah. Just, and if, if anybody's dealing with stuff like that, like you can reach out to us. Like I've, I've gotten quite a few contacts now in the field of helping people in that area that we could connect you with. So, right. Yeah. It, 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 and, and the biggest thing, no matter what you're dealing with, whether it being something, what I was dealing with, or if it's law enforcement related, just know that you're not the only one that's going through that. Yeah. Because there's many other people that feel that same way. Like I said, how when I first started working at the jail, how I felt lonely and stuff like that, where I had to be in a hotel room by myself. And I just felt kind of uh, yucky because I was like, man, I just got in dealing with these jerks. And now I'm here. And there's other people out there, not just me, that, that have felt that same way. Not all of yeah. them ever talk about it, but I'm not the only one. So yeah, that's a, that's the stigma nowadays. It's the I mean, if you're in law enforcement or some something like that field, you you bottle it up, and that's that's not what you should do. Yeah, and fortunately for me, and this is something that uh, Corey said. And I think my wife said it too. Uh, actually, almost everybody said the same thing. But it just I keep forgetting about it until someone remembers me. You're one of the lucky ones, is what they told me, that you got out when you did. Yeah. Or else I'd be um, probably one of those guys that were on the uh, headlines of and that aren't allowed on the Officer Down Memorial page because I off myself because it got so bad. So yeah. I was one of the lucky ones who realized at that moment, hey, this isn't for you. You need to take care of yourself. You need to get out. And yeah, and that's one thing that I'll always remember. And um I can't wait for um, your thing to start. Like we've, we've been talking throughout the weeks and stuff of, you know, it'll move slow, but you know, if we help one person do that's a win. It's worth and, it. Yeah. And that's just, that's really good. Um, Cause I mean, I, throughout the week, I'll listen to other podcasts on uh, that do somewhat similar things of what you want to do. And I'm like, I, I just write down ideas. I'm like, Oh man, we could probably do that. Probably do that. Maybe we could talk to them. Maybe we could do that, which is actually kind of funny because I was listening to Brit, uh, It's Needed, and some guy came up to me the other day, and I felt like I was turning into AJ all of a sudden. Some guy goes, hey, man, what's good to me? I go, man, I can't call it. Can't call it. <laughs> like, hey, why do I say that? Because that's what they always say. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Bet. Bet. Bet, man. I'm like, why am I talking like that? I never talk like that. I was like, man, well, AJ, you're rubbing off on me, dude. The the light skin persuasion. What's he call him? My light skin, light brother, skin wonder, wonder from another light, brother from another mother. Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. I love those guys. They're so funny. They're awesome too. They're they just told their stories too. If you haven't listened to their yeah. episodes, yeah. Uh, Ryan's uh, told his story, then AJ told his. So, but anyways, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. It means the world to us. Um, hopefully, we'll have another top five coming up soon. Um, but you could uh, reach us at 916-259-3030. Email us at therealwthshow at gmail.com. And I'm pretty sure all of our um, socials are now The Real WTH Show. So you yeah. can find us on you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, and then um, Untapped um, also at The Unreal or Unreal, The Real WTH Show. What? Can you hear me? Anna? Oh, now I can. You, you cut off for a second there. Did I lose my audio? No, I can still hear you. This is embarrassing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Say something. Hello? Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. I completely lost audio on you. Uh oh.
Are you there? Hello? I have a feeling you're making fun of me right now. You're joking around. I'm not joking. Dude, why can't I hear you? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> Did you just flush your toilet? <laughs> Dude. What the heck? Okay, are you on your phone or are you on your iPad right now? Hold up number one if you're on your iPad. Hold up your one finger if you're on your iPad. So you're on your phone. So I can't even call you right now. <laughs> you could okay. I'm going to have to end it. And, it I'll... and call me back. Okay, I'll stop it right here. I'm just going to stop the recording. <laughs>